What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Vitamin Lead, your healthy dose of leadership. I am your host, TJ Reed, and I am so excited tonight to have our guest, Sabrina Runback. Sabrina, thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening in. That's awesome. So, Sabrina, uh, our listeners have already heard a little bit of your bio, but why don't you just kind of give us a, a brief, tell us about yourself. Sure. Um, so it was about four years ago. There I was having a fever of 101 performing heart surgery. Hmm. I wondered how could my childhood passion working in medicine and living the American dream have turned into such an unhealthy reality. Hmm. When I called in sick the next morning, my manager made me feel like I was inconveniencing him. <laughs> A few weeks later, I treat a young man who needed his fourth open heart surgery. Wow. But he failed to report new symptoms that he thought were small and insignificant. And that's when I realized I have these small and insignificant things in my own life that I have to address before I too become a patient. Hmm. I believe that many young ambitious professionals like me are working in the areas of their passion, but having similar struggles. I used to say yes to almost everything because society teaches us to be polite so we can be liked by people. And we are in that type A mentality when you are ambitious people, I got this. Yeah. It's a default, of course. But when we say yes to things that do not align with our core values, then we might be resentful, unable to deliver the quality results, or couldn't keep our promises. Mm. So with my own experience, I decided I was the only person who's holding myself back, allowing myself to get sick, allowing my sanity to go away, mm. and I didn't like who I was. I didn't like the person who complains, who, who's not in a state of what I could be. So then I decided to say no to things that do not serve me, drains my energy, and say yes to the only things that will actually elevate myself and keep me motivated. And through test and trial, error, research, right, training myself, I came up with a system, what I call say no to stress, and say yes to stamina, and I mm. turn my life around. So now I'm able to still work four days in OR, um, train for a fitness competition, and working with other millennial healthcare professionals, especially women, to have a life full of heck yes, so <laughs> then they can wake up, feel excited, and rise up as leaders in the field. I love that. Say no to stress, say yes to stamina. That is, that's a, that's a great one there. <laughs> so, so let's, let, let's talk a little bit about your story, right? Like, mm -hmm. why do you, why do you think it's so hard for us? Uh, do, you, do you think like, especially for somebody like you that I'm sure you put, you know, thousands of dollars of like uh, college training and uh, all of these, we have some friends that are in medical school and all these hours and hours and hours of doing this sort of stuff. Do you think it's harder to start saying no because they feel like I'm in too deep right now? Um, oh, yes. <laughs> um, I don't think it's just healthcare, right? It's any, yeah. any profession that you picked, you started from a one idea and you thought this is a good idea whether that good idea is bestowed from societal expectation, your parents told you this great, and or you, you might have some experience yourself, right? Some people do shadowing from school, from talking to people, but you can never really understand the role of daily life of someone until you live it. Hmm. So the problem was we actually start with a means goal instead of ends goal. Hmm. So what that means is think about when we were young, what's the most common question? What are you going to be when you grow up? Exactly. Right. <laughs> but no one really asks us, how do you want to live when hmm. you grow up? 
So we pick these routes that we think can be very reputable, respectful, um, have a good earning, and thinking that equals a great life. Yeah. But because we're so unique in our own need, who we are, how we wanted to show up, but if we haven't really dive deep into the, these core messages, then we don't really know how we want to live. We just pick something hoping it will get us to the ideal life. Instead of picking, understanding your ideal life, then work backwards. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really good. I I when when you were when you were sharing about like like how do you want to live? I remember like my mind actually zipped back to when I was 17. I really thought I wanted to be like a sports broadcaster and then I read this book by this uh sportscaster from ESPN on what their typical day looks like and what their typical month looks like and I said, "Oh dear god, I do not want to live that type of a life." <laughs> And, and I'm, I'm glad I had that foresight at 17 years old to realize that's not the the values that I would have in life to, to enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's, it's hard if you are just thinking about the means and not the, the end there. Right. And that's one of the first question when students come to me and want to shadow me and I challenge them, why this life? Why healthcare? And there are so many different specialties within healthcare um, that you can be a provider. Why this particular one that you're picking? Yeah. And for some, some of them, it can feel like, wow, no one really asked me these questions. Why are you picking on me? Yeah. But they're not also thinking, you're not thinking long term. Hmm. With how you're imagining this life could be. It's not just you got a degree, you're going to earn a, a job and then you had a paycheck. That That's just like what you do short term to just to live. But what is the ultimate mission in life? How you want it to be presented to others or who you are as a person? I think that's what's lacking is we don't have enough time to just to have a date to ourselves. We deserve to have a day with ourselves <laughs> regularly. Yeah. To ask these difficult questions and then to be honoring ourselves to give a true answer. Yeah. So you you you've talked to these students and you asked them these questions. Uh what what are the answers that you hear that you go, yeah, this person's probably gonna make it in what they're in what they're hoping to do here in healthcare? How do you like how are you seeing people like when you're deciphering what, what the answer they give you? When people can share them why, their purpose with yeah. the story. Is it usually when, a personal story of like a family yes. member that went through something or something like that? It could be a family story or it could be their friend happened this, right? Somehow it's relational. And yeah. they made a connection on the deeper level mm. and that bring up a dry. So I have friends who did uh, public health like me. Um, bef it was, uh, sh she had a degree in undergrad in public health. And then she saw her professor telling her when people, let's say there's a disease outbreak, one out of hundred recognize their symptom, got help, cure, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But what about the rest of 99%, right? The rest of 99 people, how are you gonna help them? So that's her drive to be presenting both in the medical realm, but also some public health. How do we spread the knowledge to leverage um, each other's uh, understanding and wanting to help and servitude so we can have more people receiving help and not ignoring signs or just because they didn't know. Yeah. And um, so these people can make it because they have a drive, they have a purpose, they can continue to grow and expand on that. I like that. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that lead into really my first key step in my system is to say no to vagueness. So hmm. then you can dream big and achieve more. Talk, let's talk a little bit about that, like getting rid of vagueness and achieving more. 
Right. So when we don't really know what we want it, then it's really hard for people to help us. Yeah. Because no one can read our minds. I don't know about a lot of people, but I don't have that telepathic reading. <laughs> so what I do is before you start any new project or adventure, write a one sentence purpose statement. When you are so clear on what you goals are, why you're doing something, that passion, that drive are able to vibrate out to other people when you're able to share it, second step, clearly with others. Mm. And then they can feel your reasoning behind it and therefore jump on the wagon and help you to get there. Mm. So if we're sense. missing, right? So if we're missing the purpose part and the explaining part, then we'll be alone in this journey. I, I, I've struggled with that at times. So like for, for me personally, um, there's times where I go, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily know what I want, right? So uh, can, can we create purpose? Is that a, the best approach? Because for me, I'm also, I also maybe feel like there's some kind of like mystical element to it. Like this purpose is supposed to kind of smack me upside the head and, and all of a sudden I'm going to find purpose and in, in what I need to do next in my life. Um, how have you helped people walk through that? I think many people are lacking in clarity. Um, it's, it's, it's because we have so much external expectations and not our own internal expectation. So we're constantly on the go and now allowing ourselves to say, okay, you gotta stop. You have to do reflection. Like, where mm. are you in life now? And then think about where you wanna go. Mm. What are all the strengths that you already have that you can leverage on, build up to that? And what are these weaknesses? Maybe you're hindering yourself and you're, you haven't faced these hidden weaknesses. So then therefore, if you don't know, of course, you don't know. Right. So can we have the courage to actually reflect on everything we did, allow ourselves to feel the win, live mm. into the win, and then keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, man, that's such a good key to, that's, and that's probably true of me. Like the, the times where I'm unclear, the times that I haven't been reflecting well and in learning from the past experiences I've had. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's difficult, right? It's easier to say I'm busy. I'm doing a lot of things, but just being busy, but not efficient will actually drains your energy, costs more time up front instead of figuring out ways that will produce your time. Yeah. So can I ask you a question about health, the healthcare industry as far as that's concerned? Uh, like, oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is a question, I mean, I, I don't know that much about it. Like I haven't studied this or whatever, but I would imagine in healthcare, especially in surgery or somebody that's people facing a lot of the time, like everything is urgent, right? And so uh, how, how have you learned to prioritize what's important when there's a lot of people in need in front of you? Right. If a lot of people will use that urgency as an excuse and they use as excuse to be frustrated, to feel that overwhelm and to feel like it's their own burden to take that on instead yeah. of delegating. You have mm -hmm. teams, you have nurses, case managers, uh, advanced practitioners, physicians, everyone should be a team and should be having open communication, it also means sometimes those communication, those conversations are not going to be easy. Hmm. And having a safe place, just be open to talk about what you see works, what doesn't work, that's also a key component. But if we constantly thinking, well, everything is urgent, then really you don't know prioritizing anything at all, right? Right. Um, so yes, there can be very critical situation and we're trained to handle that critical situation. But not everyone is gonna be like left death like every minute of the day. Right. So- it, it, That's what the TV shows say it is, but I, I don't know if that's actually true. 
<laughs> I mean, we are hoping that, you, you know, even after you big open heart surgery, most people can get out of the hospital within a week. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I know it should be just yes when you're coming out of surgery one thing when I bring in to my patient is yes you do all the physicals history regular taking but I also ask them questions like what do you actually want your life to be after the surgery mm. it is a big deal it will yeah. take you month to recovery so what is that like at the end of the tunnel for you hmm. because when we haven't clearly pictured that a lot of patients do have depressions associated with having a big surgery right because yeah. they are in pain they um decompensating they're not able to move as well feel that well couldn't eat so well so the journey of having surgery itself is not as hard as having the recovery role right just like mm -hmm. any of us you can feel that burned out but are you trying to avoid it just to say it's normal let me just keep chucking along hustling pushing through but to what point right it's like so the, it's, if, it's like yeah. the person that went through open heart surgery and then they just act like they didn't have open heart surgery and go for a run the next day basically it's, yeah you could it right <laughs> like what if you fall and like somehow twist the wire that put your chest together it's an even bigger deal to you probably to need that. another open heart surgery that day if you did that <laughs> <laughs> so those are the things that we have to consider allowing ourselves to look ahead you don't have to focus so much on the end but having an end goal clear enough that you can visualize it you can feel it you can even build that emotional connection to that yeah. ultimate achievement that is so clear that's your north star that will guide you yeah. right and then take it back start reflecting on where we are in life and then having these smaller checkpoints, making things that are doable, right? Then we don't feel like all this pressure again. Yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. I, <laughs> I'm learning a lot of leadership lessons from somebody in healthcare today. What's, a, what's, a, what's another leadership lesson you've learned in healthcare that you think is like able to be broadly applied to, to any leader? Yeah, so the number two step uh, in my system is say no to negative thoughts so you mm. can reclaim your mental power mm. because every mission has roadblocks. The yeah. I'm positive I can attitude generates that power and skills need to overcome those things. Yeah. So the simplest way is every morning, say one positive thing about yourself out loud so mm. you can begin the day on the good note. And therefore, when we continue to repeat these various positive thoughts and start then truly believe in our ability, in these good qualities, and then we start reprogramming our brain. Hmm. Is, there, is there anybody that has that built in really well from the nurture they've had in their life that they just instantly think positive thoughts? Or for all of us, does it, do we naturally go to negative thoughts about ourselves? Actually, study has been shown we, in a regular day, we have more negative thoughts in our head than positive ones. Hmm. So it does take a lot of intentionality to focus and redirect yourself into that positivity. And it's, by doing this exercise, you are creating an identity shift. That's really interesting. Let's, so let's, let's talk a little bit more about mental health barriers because I know that one of the things you're really passionate about is helping female professionals overcome like their mental health barriers. What are some of the ways that you, you encourage them to do that? Right. So number one is to look at what is your perception, right? Our perception can determine our outcome. So when I explain it, it's almost like, our whole brain is a factory of thoughts. 
And most of the time, you have thousands, a million thoughts that just keep going in your head. Yeah. So you got to determine: Are those going to be negative or positive? The capacity are more like a factory, and you have two foremen who's the in charge of us pumping up more positive thoughts. Yes, you can do it. Where the negative thoughts? Oh no, don't go near by that person. Right. Right. Are you allowing other people or yourself to build this space filled with positivity? Then, therefore, the negativity will shrink hmm. versus the other way around. And that's the attitude of my perception.、Uh, I need to build courage to even face that perception,、hmm. to have the, you know, be brave enough to ask questions: Is this the reality? Or it's just the reality I created,、hmm. right? And so that means letting go of self-doubt, letting go of these negative self-talks, and then think about putting blinders on when naysayers trying to tell you things. But if we're doing these positive activities, reprogramming ourselves every morning. Right, you're t- you're saying good things about yourself. You really believe in yourself. Yeah. Now, of course, you trust yourself. You have confidence. You're a competent person. And then, when other people are saying, give advices that are not welcoming, <laughs> then you can simply say thank you, but no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That's going in the trash for today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and then is think about these leaders, right? Hardcore, we're driven, we just keep going. But when we're going too hard on ourselves, and you're putting such a perfectionism, it's、yeah. actually a sign of fear. Yeah. You know, like what people say, done is always better than perfect, right? Like so, if you you actually put in an effort, you tried it. Whatever you can give, that eighty percent is better than zero percent. Yeah. So even you didn't get to that hundred percent, if you didn't even put it out, how do you even evaluate yourself whether that is the eighty percent or a hundred percent? Yeah, I can't be judged if I don't show up today to do that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then lastly, is about open to receive. There are so many resources out there. There are people who are willing to help each other. But are you willing to receive those gifts?、Hmm. The, psychology have put two concepts in that. So there are one extreme of people who thinks, "Well, I'm not good enough. If I if I receive other people's help, how do I have to repay them?" Right. So then、yeah. you put yourself in a lacking state. And then there's the extreme. Well, I'm too good. Like I don't need someone to help me. And if they want to help me, do I need to pay them some way? Right? Start again. Like, like either I'm not good enough. I don't know how to pay other people back, or I'm too good. Then it's okay. I got this. So simple story. Like. If you go to a grocery store, right? Yeah. People help you to package everything, and then some of them will willing to load your cart for you. Yeah. Will you feel like they're a thief and worry about where your things are going, or you just simply say, "Well, thank you. That's really kind of you." Yeah. <laughs> I w- I was a I was a grocery bagger myself, so I know the the right way to bag those groceries and stuff like that, but. <laughs> That's good. That's that, that's so helpful. I, it really is a mental game, huh? Like、uh, just learning to kind of win the mental game really helps with some of this. Right. Exactly. Our, you know, our, we are our best friend. We're our worst enemy.、Hmm. It's your decision of how you look at life. How do you move forward? And that also tie into my third point is to put. Say no to putting self care last, because、mm. when you're taking care of yourself first, then you allow yourself to give the best of you, not what's left of you. Yeah. No matter what, if you don't have the building block of stamina, energy, 
productivity would not go far. Yeah. So I help people to plan these daily stamina reboot session. So then you can have these moments to recharge and never have these afternoon slumps. Hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like what yeah. that looks like? So it could be many different things. Um, you know, what's funny is research have shown yawning is contagious, right? Yeah. And yawning actually allows us to decrease blood flow to our prefrontal cortex, which are our logical thinking, processing, right, learning. Hmm. So when our brain is so high wired, this neuron, everything is firing and doing, if you actually take a little bit of time to calm your brain, then you just give yourself a little reboot. Hmm. So when people tell me that, oh no, my mind is always going, can't calm down. I'm like, let's just do this with me. You know, <laughs> it's just yawning. So because the yawning is so contagious, even when I'm saying the word yawning, where people are doing it, you're probably already thinking about, wow, you know, I'm feeling it back here right now myself. Yeah, so. <laughs> right? So it's a combination of when you do yawn, you close your eyes, you're concentrated only on your breath, hmm. intentionally removing yourself from whatever else you are doing. Yeah. And you can also stretch and really, you know, release those tensions from your muscles. And that will allow you to just to calm your brain for a minute or two, it doesn't have to be long, and come right back and then set the new intention for the next task hmm. that's on your agenda. Hmm. It's like a restart of your computer when you know that it's just not running the way that you think it should. Yes, right? The, the best way to reboot your technology is to shut it down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so good. I, I really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to employ that tomorrow when I'm feeling yeah, that, that, that slump. Yeah. So, and then many people have different ways. You can do central channel breathing. Um, yoga has this like laughing yoga, right? Like at the end. Um, and you can, if you do have time, might as well do a meditation, right? Yeah. Or do a stretch exercise. Use a lacrosse ball. Just roll out your muscles. Whatever it is, even just go to the restroom. Get a drink. Yeah. Try not to think about what you are doing and then you can reboot yourself because you set the intentional distractions yeah. instead of unintentional, always checking our phone. Oh, there's another email. Oh, someone else gave me a new project. Yeah, that's hard for me. I, I, I'm working at it. I've, I've very much last year and this year I've set, a, set an intention to get better at that. And so these are some very helpful tips that'll, that'll help me along the way too. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to help. <laughs> Let me know how it can turn out. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Sabrina, if somebody wants to connect with you, if they're, they're looking to learn more from you, like where, where can our listeners connect with you? Yeah. So I'm very active on Instagram and LinkedIn and my handle is my phone name, Sabrina Rombeck, R-U-N-B-E-C-K. And for thanking everyone from joining us and listening in, I know really creating that life filled of heck yes requires conscious intention, like our whole thing today. And it also starts by knowing your strengths and weaknesses. So you can take this free three-minute quiz that will give you 10 major categories of life that are intertwined with each other. Hmm. So you can identify what are your weakness points that can potentially hold you back in life. And to grab a copy of that quiz, go to sabrinarumbach.com forward slash assessment. Awesome. We'll make sure to put those links in our show notes as well so that they can access that. And I look forward. I'm going to take that assessment after we're done talking tonight. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'll send you a description of how, how you can look at your results. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Well, Sabrina, it has been an absolute delight talking to you tonight. Thank you for, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, joining us for that. Yeah. Thank you for having me on here. 
Good. Well, uh, we will talk to you soon and stay healthy leaders and have a great day.